Hello everyone, my name is Nick Birchall. Very happy to be with you for GeoIgnite here in 2020, up here in sunny Canada. Um, I have uh, very cool customer stories for you today, so let me just share my screen and I'll jump right on in. Okay, so this is actually a repeat of what I presented at a cartographic conference a couple of years ago. Uh, what I'll show you today is some journeys taken to produce high quality maps in Adobe Creative Cloud with Map Publisher and Geographic Imager. I'll also show you some stories of how this and other cartographic content is being used through our app for navigation, for work and for play, and show you some key initiatives we're working on this year. As the theme of GeoIgnite this year is leadership in times of disruption, I've also, I also have some stories how we've been assisting in devastating events globally and how we at Avenza have responded to the COVID-19 pandemic. So these are some of the subjects that I'm working through with you today. Um, as readers of The Hobbit know, um, I've slid these into chapters of The Hobbit. So the first chapter is An Unexpected Journey. The reason why we called this uh, an unexpected journey is because um, we've really moved from kind of the creation side of map making into the consumption side of map making, um, I guess halfway through our existence. We were established in 1995, uh, we're headquartered in Midtown Toronto, and we're focused on delivering powerful mapping software that facilitates design, publication, and spatial imaging, as well as providing a platform for commercial and recreational users to consume maps on their mobile devices. Map Publisher is a suite of plugin tools for Adobe Illustrator, which leverages its superior graphics capabilities for high-end map creation. Geographic Imager software enhances Adobe Photoshop to make working with spatial imagery quick and efficient. The Avenza Maps app helps users consume and work with high-quality cartographic products, even when offline. We're also proudly involved with GoGeomatics meetups. We attend Betty's on King Street in Toronto quite regularly, often in high numbers. We presented there a few times. Um, I myself presented at the Peterborough um, GoGeomatics event uh, this last year. Um, we have a key partnership with Fleming College in Lindsay, Ontario, so I work very closely with the professor there to, to have a re really dis good discussion with the, uh, with the Fleming College attendees at that location. So just to give you a quick oversight for Map Publisher, so, um, so yes, this software product has been around 25 years. It combines the power of the best of vector graphics application and Adobe Illustrator with over 70 cartographic tools, style sheets, grids, indexing, scale bars, smart labeling, you name it. We also import all industry standard GIS data formats, Esri Shape, KML, GML, MapInfo, etc. We connect to online servers such as WMS and WFS. We also connect to ArcGIS Online. We have a significant customer base, names including National Geographic, New York Times, Washington Post, the National Geospatial Agency, Department of Defense, and the Department of State. So Geographic Imager is an extension for Photoshop that allows you to work with spatial imagery in the best raster graphics application. Spatial imagery formats are added to the library of formats that Photoshop can open. Using the embedded georeferencing information in these formats, which are continuously retained, you can tile, mosaic, reproject, and perform terrain shading. Our Avenza Maps app connects seamlessly to a store that contains fully georeferenced maps Using the built-in GPS unit of the device, these maps can then be used for navigation with a suite of tools, even when you are offline. While we have a huge recreational customer base, in recent years, the app has become the tool of choice for many companies heading up efforts in firefighting, forestry, and search and rescue. And all of these individuals use a combination of their own content as being able to choose from over 1 million maps on the store. This brings us to our platform, and you can see there's you know, a seamless connection between all of our products. 
uh, our map publisher in Geographic Image, a desktop software is used to make high quality maps completely inside Adobe and work with spatial imagery. Geospatial content can be uploaded to our map store to enable them to be distributed to end users. Our events and maps app connects seamlessly to that store and you can download these maps to be used for navigation with a suite of tools, again, even when you're offline. Our first story is from our friends Drew and Greg at Map the Experience. So based out of California and Colorado, Map the Experience make maps for fly fishing, hunting, hiking, biking, and kayaking. These maps are also distributed via the Avenza Maps app and are also available on paper, even on bandanas, cloths, and blankets. This story gives a brief insight into the map made for the Upper Hicks and Summer Trail, which is just east of La Crosse, Wisconsin. First, the team downloaded raw digital elevation data files from the USGS national map. Next, they imported the digital elevation data into Photoshop using Geographic Imager. This ensured that all the georeference and coordinate system info would be maintained for subsequent manipulation in GI, which is what we call Geographic Imager. Their next step is to shade the terrain to use an applicable background using GI's terrain shader. Using the transform tool, the hill shade was then reprojected to the desired coordinate system, i.e. the coordinate system that will be used for the map in Adobe Illustrator. Using the extent in another data set, the geocrop tool was used to crop the image to the required geographic values. In Illustrator with Map Publisher, the image as well as shapefiles are imported. The shapefiles containing contour lines, trails, roads and rivers, everything the team would need to create their map. Contours were again derived from National Map with roads from Tiger data overlaid with trail information. Map the Experience has a set of, para has a parameter, has a set of parameter of Illustrator graphic styles which are used per data set and applied accordingly. In this example, the stars for each trail line and range of elevations have been labeled based on the attributes of the trail and contour layers. Point locations are starred by applying illustrator symbols connected to attributes through map themes. They use the map tagger tool to label point data such as fishing holes, parking areas, campgrounds, and summer elevations, again using attributes in the point symbols. Mileage information is calculated using calculations derived from the length attribute of the trail lines. Once complete, Map the Experience uploaded the georeference map to the Avenza Map Store, where it can be downloaded and used for hiking and biking on the Hickson Forest Summer Trails. The store will show the location and preview images of the content, with the store being accessible via a web browser or directly from the app itself to download the map. As you can see here, the app has been used to drop place marks at key locations, with the location of the hiker or biker appearing as the blue dot on the map, even when they are offline. Our next story is from National Geographic in Evergreen, Colorado. As we are purely a software development company, we rely on understanding our customers' workflows to better shape our products, and Matt Geo have always been phenomenally open to working with us. This story describes the process of creating the Wonderland Trail Mount Rainier map using Map Publisher. Data was derived mostly from publicly available government data. Here you can see all the data post map publisher import with georeferencing and attributes intact in the Illustrator environment as sublayers in the data layer. Contour layers are labeled using Label Pro so that they can, so they can play, be placed collision free with preset styles and rules. Then text utilities are used to convert the created contour labels on a path to point text. 
The join table feature is used to bring in information from external databases, like here in order to add preset stars to hydrology layers. National Geographic then used the split layer tool to get all of their data into the correct layers and apply the correct styles. Mileage markers on trails were calculated using expressions in the map attributes edit schema tool. Attribute information attached to the vector artwork was also used extensively to label and confirm place names. National Geographic used the map view editor to get the correct scale and angle for their maps. Historically, maps were created in NADS 27, so this was also a very convenient way for them to be able to update the coordinate system to NAD 83 in Illustrator without having to recreate the map from scratch. National Geographic also keep all their edits on a duplicated map view to keep the history of edits separate. Map attributes are used to keep track of what they need to address, any additional notes, when and who the edit was credited by, and when or who completed the edit itself. The Grids and Graticules tool is used to add UTM grids to their maps. While print is still king, National Geographic also published their content on the Avenza Map Store so that the geospatial PDF can be downloaded and used for exploring parks. Here it is on the store being used out on a hike where the device's built-in GPS unit is locating the hiker. Our third story is from Billy Roberts. By day, Billy is a member of the Geospatial Data Science team within the Systems Modeling and Geospatial Data Science Group at the Energy Laboratory in Denver. In his spare time, Billy is an avid fan of Billy the Kid and other notable personas of the Wild West. After a lot of reading about Billy the Kid, he decided that he wanted to visit some of the places that he had just read about in Biddy Roberts' words, I quickly found out that there were really no good maps out there. Tourist maps were not hard to find, but they tended to be less than accurate and incomplete. So after much touring in New Mexico, conversation with local historians, and many months researching locations that are part of the narrative of Billy the Kid and the Lincoln County War, Biddy set about creating a set of authentic-looking maps of the Old West. This story describes how the Billy the Kid and the Lincoln County War map was made. Using hill shades from the US National Map website, processed through Natural Scene Designer Pro, imagery was brought into the Adobe Photoshop environment with Geographic Imager. Biddy is also working on a book which has these same maps with insets. He wanted the aged paper texture to span the page seamlessly and perfectly across all insets. So he set up his hill shades accordingly and then created an aged paper texture in Photoshop, which was aligned to the entire map page itself with each individual inset's projection. He then used GI's mosaic tool to combine, to combine the hill shading with the aged paper texture based on image extents. Historic map collections were discovered in the universities of New Mexico and Arizona, as well as the US National Archives. Biddy spent a lot of time browsing their collections, taking photos and making high resolution scans to find what he was looking for. Using these old maps as backdrops, Billy digitized the features in the Illustrator environment with Map Publisher, using map themes and native Illustrator drawing tools. Using the point plot tool, Billy was able to plot key historic sites using Illustrator symbols as point data, with the point plot tool dropping these points in known lat-long locations. Sometimes he only had 150-year-old descriptions of where things happened, but with research and much discussion with many people, Map Publisher's buffering and measuring tools helped him narrow down approximately where key events happened. Vector data used on Billy's maps come from free government data sets. As all his maps have rivers on them, the National Hydrography data set from the USGS has been key. He also would occasionally come across geodatabases from state websites, which might include roads, ghost towns, and other features he either wants to map or just uses a reference while trying to pinpoint where a key event happened.
while offering some gorgeous prints of new maps of the old west.com, Billy has recently published this map on the Avenza Map Store. So if you want to travel to New Mexico and experience firsthand where key events took place, the georeference content allows you to do just that on your smartphone. As the theme of GeoIgnite this year is leadership in times of disruption, we have some stories on how we have been assisting in devastating events globally. Back in January this year, while those terrible fires were raging in Australia, we gave a pile of free Avenza Maps licenses to emergency workers and first responders at the Department of Environment, Land, Water and Planning. Having these licenses prove valuable to their, to their staff, interstate crews and overseas crews were able to access and use maps on their mobile devices. They also had QR codes on paper maps, so that rap rapidly helped download digital versions for those fighting fires offline and was a massive success for their department. Our fourth story, though, is how the availability of maps on the Avenza Map Store provided tangible assistance in the relief efforts for Hurricane Florence. In 2018, when Hurricane Florence was coming in, we organized our people to be on standby to escalate the pushing of content to assist in relief and response efforts, such as what happened with Florence that same year. The hurricane struck the Carolinas, displacing over a million people. The National Geospatial Agency, a key partner of, of Avenza's, is directly involved in much of the search and rescue efforts. As I'm sure you're also aware, many cell towers were knocked down and having access to offline maps to find and assist affected parties was vital for this situation. The National Geospatial Agency needed their maps in the hands of the National Guard and search and rescue operatives and contacted us at Avenza to push their content to the Avenza map store. With new content from the NGA and existing content on the store, we created a new Hurricane Florence map category. Maps were uploaded and made available within hours of being provided to us with additional imagery from the National Agriculture Imagery Program within 24 hours. All in all, we processed over 3,000 NIP images, which were bundled together by county. We provided access to Avenza Maps Pro for the duration of the response effort, and all of this was distributed to our users through an email blast. We also provided to NGA for their distribution. So I wanted to talk about COVID-19 and I guess how our customers and us at Avenza have been responding um, to this uh, crazy situation we've been in since March. Um, so yeah, we've been doing everything in our power to keep our active users up and running across all our products during the pandemic. For many of our larger desktop customers, we've extended trials and worked with them to ensure that they continue to work remotely, even in situations when they, when they are not connected to their work intranet. While this has required significant efforts on our part, particularly in our sales team, it has allowed our customers to continue to work uninterrupted. With Avenza Maps, many government and private organizations have had to consider their financial positioning and have often experienced delays in obtaining funding for renewals. A Department of Conservation and National Resources, for example, was extended a significant grace period for their renewal without seeing a lapse in service or support for that period while we waited for the order to arrive. Essentially, our customers and users have supported us for years by purchasing, renewing, and championing Avenza products, and we're more than happy to help them continue to create great maps and help them in the field during this time. All of us at Avenza have been working from home since mid-March, and we've actually had really increased productivity. We've adopted new tools to help us work remote, and we're actually more collaborative than ever because we have to be. While we are in stability mode, we are actually continuing to grow our organization cautiously, bringing in a talented crew of contractors to help us with our big plans as we move forward. So 
I wanted to give you a glimpse of some of the uh, initiatives that we're working on and have worked on already in 2020 for desktop, uh, because that's really my forte. Um, within Map Publisher, um, we've been focusing very heavily on educational licensing this year. Um, you know, we do want the application in the hands of students. Um, we see its value. Uh, colleges see its value, so it just makes sense for us to provide educational licensing uh, for a minimal or even you know give it away for free because you know it, it is such a great tool um, we've been collaborating with GIS programs here in Canada um, I've already mentioned we have a key partnership with Fleming College in Lindsay uh, so they actually have licenses for map publisher GI and for Avenza maps for their programs uh, we also give licenses to the College of Geographic Sciences in Lawrencetown so COGS in Nova Scotia where we offer free licensing for students there also uh, we're very focused on graphic design. Um, we were at Adobe Max last year. Uh, we regularly attend uh, Creative Pro. Again, we did that remotely this year in June. It was supposed to be in Austin, Texas, I believe. Um, but yeah, we're very focused on designers. Um, there's plenty of use cases on how designers, uh, you know, need to make maps for their work. Um, so we've been working with a company out of the Netherlands uh, called One Stop Map. Um, and they now have a full library of map publisher aware illustrator files for purchase. So you can, you can download them, you can open them directly in illustrator and they all have the referencing and the attribute information attached to all of the polygons, which is pretty cool stuff. Um, you may have heard of a, of a gentleman called uh, Tom Patterson who used to work for the national park service. Um, him and a couple of colleagues came out with a new projection a couple of years ago called equal earth. Uh, so there's some phenomenal world maps on that equal-earth.com site um, or with map publisher referencing or completely free to download. So, um, you know, if you want to check those out, it's, it's some really, really top end cartography. Um, Adobe have, re have recently moved to cloud storage or illustrator format. So we have responded to supporting the saving of map publisher aware illustrator files to Adobe's cloud. So that was in our version 10.6.1 release. Um, and this was released just two weeks after Adobe rolled out the new feature. So uh, kudos to our dev and QA teams for pushing that out so quickly. Uh, two features we pushed in April for our 10.6 release are spatial join and plot curve lines. Uh, for spatial join, we have responded to customer feedback over the last many years um, because our customers didn't really want to have to bounce into other GIS applications to complete their tasks. So after significant development time, we now offer the ability to copy attributes from one layer to another based on their spatial relationship. We also introduced plot curve lines in Map Publisher version 10.6. So I guess imagine a projected world map where you specify, say, Toronto and as the origin, London as, as the destination. Uh, this feature will now plot the course based on the shortest distance on the map. So imagine those flight paths on airplanes when we used to travel, that is, it's that kind of deal. Uh, we're working closely with our partners at Blue Marble Geographics in updating our projection library this year. So all the core updates to corner systems and bug fixes will be available in the update later this year. So 10.7, maybe 10.8. And we're always focused on compatibility. So Adobe generally push their major releases in October, November every year, coinciding with Adobe Max. So as in every year, we are very focused on making sure that we push our updates for Map Publisher uh, very shortly after Adobe Illustrator is released. So geographic imager this year, um, again, I already talked about educational licensing. So that, that also includes geographic imager. Um, so the little bit of a change with uh, Photoshop's cloud-based solutions. Um, we don't store geo-referencing information inside PSDs, which is what essentially Adobe pushed to the cloud as the Photoshop format. So one big thing we're starting to work on this year is adding geo-referencing formats to Adobe PSD files. So seamless for the people without, geograph without uh, Adobe Photoshop. But if you do have GI installed, uh, you will hopefully be able to save as PSD and then reopen with all that geo-referencing intact. Um, we do share our projection library with Map Publisher. So, you know, as we push the Map Publisher update, then the GI update containing that same, those same improvements to projections and coordinate system will follow suit. Uh, last year, we introduced the ability to import GIS vectors. So this is points, this is text, areas and lines. So think of everything that you can import into Map Publisher. 
um, we've added that capability into uh, into Geographic Imager. So this year, um, hopefully within a couple of months, um, in version 6.2, you will now be able to export those same PARs and points of interest back out to GIS formats for QA and QEC purposes. So it doesn't need to be the vectors you've imported. It can also be vectors, text, points that you've actually created in Photoshop. Uh, 2021 compatibility, so same deal as Illustrator, so Photoshop pushed the same time of year. So we will uh, be releasing, hopefully, just shortly after Matt Publisher, a geographic imager release that is compatible with CC 2021. So that's all from me for now. Um, so this is my digit. So again, uh, my name is Nick Birchall. It's been a blast talking to you guys today. Um, hopefully you enjoy the recording. I'll be around for uh, some QA after this recording. Um, you can get me anytime, nick at Um That's my Twitter address. Um, those are our websites. Um, those are our hashtags. So anyway, it's been a blast, and hopefully I'll talk to a few of you guys uh, shortly. Thanks a lot. Bye. I welcome everybody to the Q&A with uh, Nick at Avenza. How are you doing? Hey, Jonathan. How are you? Pretty good. Thanks so much for good being one of our presenting partners. We're super excited to have uh, Avenza with us. Uh, that was a really uh, fascinating um, presentation. I love to see. So you mentioned COGS there. Oh, uh, sorry. A little bit of uh, work I got to do first. Uh, everybody, uh, we've got the Q&A tool in, in the Zoom, so please feel free. Uh, we've got, we've got Q&A now, uh, so before I started rambling a bit, uh, put, your, put your questions for, for Nick and Avenza uh, in the Q&A. Uh, but yeah, I, I wanted to uh, start us off. So you mentioned Cogs and yes. Fleming. Um, yes. We've got some great relationships there ourselves. I'm myself a Cogs grad. Um, I don't think, so I was there 20 years ago. I don't think we had a Venza. Um, so did, was that even, when did you start working with COGS? Um, I would need to check with the sales team, but I think we've probably been working with COGS now for the best part of the last decade. Wow. So. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. No, we uh, have wonderful tools and, you know, we're happy to uh, introduce them to, uh, you know, a lot more syllabuses for sure across the country. Yeah, and the Fleming program as well, you said you were in. Um, do you guys go in and do some training, or do you provide the, uh, the, the licenses and, and uh, step away? So, yeah, we're very invested with uh, Fleming. That was part of the deal that we had. Um, you probably have worked with Marika Williams at Fleming in the past. So, um, so we're, very, we're very close with those guys. You know, we do go geomatics talks with them. Um, we're very engaged with them on their syllabus in general because, you know, we, we actually want the students to use all of the capabilities of Map Publisher and Geographic Imager in their programs and not just kind of, you know, bounce in, bounce out. It's not just an importing of data thing into Adobe mm -hmm. Illustrator, right? So, you know, we're, we are actively engaged. We want to expand their syllabus with Fleming and, you know, we, we want to make sure that these wonderful tools are leveraged by all students. Yeah, that that's yeah. I think uh, the Avenza software, I was able to use it uh, when I was a GIS specialist with an engineering firm about ten years ago, um, and, and I, I really liked it. So we've got some questions coming in from the audience. Great. So let's turn uh, to those. Um, so from Elizabeth McCready, with the increase in productivity during working remotely, do you see that continuing in the future as a regular option for staff? I think any organization, Jonathan, uh, throughout the country um, needs to be open to the fact that, uh, you know, we have been responding phenomenally to the fact that we are all working from home. Um, I don't know if you know where Port Hope is in Ontario. Um, I had a significant commute for four hours, three days of the week into Toronto, right? Oh, wow. So um, 
I think for me, just not having to jump on a go train and, you know, a drive to Washoe every day has really helped with kind of sleeping, with productivity. Um, I know a number of people at events that have significant commutes as well. So I think for us all, um, we've actually been working a lot, not more, but a lot more productively because we don't actually have that, you know, that big gap out of the day where you are commuting, right? I guess on the flip side as well, it's, uh, I guess the one thing that we've missed, which I'm sure um, other organizations can attest to is the collaboration piece. Um, you know, there's a lot more one-on-ones, there's a lot more kind of team meetings done, you know, I guess more uh, reactively rather than proactively. It's, mm. I think it's just the uh, the way this year is that, you know, you're not having the water cooler uh, discussions anymore and you know we've we've had a number of new staff that have come in since march and you know it's you have to actually reach out and you know talk to these people to introduce yourself to you know to get a bit of camaraderie there with with these people right because you, you just don't see them in the office right so if that um, answers your qu- question elizabeth <laughs> i think so uh, i think that was a great response Let's, uh, we've got some more questions coming in. Can you, uh, so this is from an anonymous attendee. Yes. Uh, can you confirm, are all the tools in Photoshop available, available to manipulate spatial imagery with geographic imager? I think the content aware fill tool would be amazing for removing small clouds and satellite images. Yeah, so we, uh, that is definitely on our roadmap, um, anonymous attendee. So, uh, yes, we are certainly looking at uh, moving geographic imager. So, you know, change detection, that kind of stuff, right? Um, but yes, um, yeah, it's on our roadmap. Cool. Something for the future to look forward to. Yes, for sure. <laughs> uh, another, uh, another question from the audience. I use Map Publisher while attending the GIS program at Fleming College, and I absolutely loved it. I dream of creating high quality maps for various parks and trail systems in my community. However, as a hobbyist volunteer, uh, making making makes sorry making make, making makes for fun for the benefit of the community. I cannot afford the Avenza license fees. Have you considered offering a special license class? for nonprofit volunteer work? We do absolutely offer nonprofit volunteer work licensing. So you can either hit me at nick at avenza.com or uh, email our phenomenal sales team. But yes, we will certainly cut you a deal for a nonprofit. Absolutely. Fantastic. And um, maybe you could speak a little bit. I've always been curious about who do you find is your, uh, your customers? Who, who do you think are the customers that you have that get the most out of your, your software? I mean, listen, we're a, we're a worldwide um, software um, provider, right? So, you know, we, we basically work with cartographic institutions globally. Um, we have a phenomenal reseller network. Um, you know, I'm not going to kind of BS you that uh, a, lot of our, a lot of our work is in the U.S., as you saw in the presentation today. We mm-hmm. really want to expand that into Canada mm-hmm. this year. That's definitely something that I'm focused on. Hopefully, when you tune back in next June, We'll have a lot more Canadian stories for you guys to mm-hmm. listen to as well. Um, but really, I guess from a map publisher perspective, yes, it's cartography. Yes, it's the people that want to make high-end, you know, real quality map, you know, maps at the end of the day because you know people want to work in Adobe Illustrator because that is the premier graphics tool. So mm-hmm. you know, I guess elevator pitch-wise, you know, we are basically um, GIS within Adobe, right? Right. Um- um, have you guys been looking at um, now that, you know, everything's changed? Um, I'm not familiar with your opportunities for engagement and training and things. Are you guys doing a um, moving towards more webinars and online engagements for, for people um, maybe who weren't as lucky to have the software at a COGS or a Fleming? Yeah, for sure. Um, so we are coming around now to doing a lot more remote training sessions. Um, we've got two queued up already, again, uh, with our friends down south. Um, we did have a webinar that we were planning for Ottawa um, this month. Oh, so, well, yes. we'll get the word out about that. 
Um, where I mean, can they where can they find that on your website under? No, I, I guess Jonathan, we'd we'd been discussing doing something at Geo Ignite when this thing was still happening. Oh uh, right, I see what you in mean. person, right? So, um, but yes, we are doing a lot more remote things now because we have to. Um, again, we have resellers around the world; they all complete their training programs as well. Um, so, if you guys have any interest in in getting some training, um, please let me know, and we can certainly uh, start working that through. Well, we're going to be following up with all the conference attendees um, after the fact. So we're going to make that opportunity avail available to them. We have another question from the audience. Uh, from Chrissy. Um, brilliant presentation. I loved how you set it up like a Tolkien story. My question, what has been the most interesting project you've been able to work on? Is this a Nick Birchall career uh, question or an Avenza question? Uh, they don't, they don't uh, <laughs> clarify. <laughs> uh, take both. Um, you know, I, I guess, you know, I maybe didn't do the kind of the full intro on me at the start, but um, I was a cartographer for, uh, I guess, the best part of a decade during the 90s. So that's always something that I wanted to do. Um, so I guess one of my first positions was, um, yes, I do have an accent, so I'm from across the pond, um, was working out of a little company called Lovell Johns in the UK. So we used to make um, wall maps, yellow pages maps, um, atlases. Um, I think one of the coolest projects that I probably ever worked on to this day was uh, we worked with um, an Australian company to basically generate a wall map that was upside down. So, you know, you can imagine kind of the central meridian is, is running through the middle of Australia. Um, Australia is basically, you know, where the UK would be on a typical world map. Um, and that was all done through uh, Alders Freehand back there. And okay. uh, we generated the data through uh, Bentley Microstation. So I guess that was one of the first things that, you know, as a cartographer, you, you see things in the stores, you see things for sale in... Uh, you know, in, in posters and things to see something that you've generated out there for, uh, for purchase was, it made it all real, right? Certainly. Yeah. So. There's a, there's a, obviously as um, you know, it's such an art and a science, uh, for cartography. Um, it is. And I was basically educated in manual cartography as well. So we were in, uh, we were in dark rooms, you know, pure coat scribing, that kind of deal, right? I'm tr trying to age myself right now, but, uh, you know, you kind of understand what high quality outputs actually mean. And if, if you're not delivering those high quality outputs, then, you know, there's a lot of rework has to happen. So I guess from a personal perspective, bringing that into the events or organization to really, you know, understand, you know, how high quality outputs should be put together and, mm -hmm. and bringing that kind of mindset into the product management group. At Avenza okay. was, you know, it's it's meat and potatoes for me. Excellent, thank you. We've got another um, question from the audience. What is the future for paper maps in the digital versus paper map debate? There will always be a need for paper maps. I don't think we can get away from that fact. You know, I, you know, we have the Avenza Maps platform. It's great to know you to know where you are with, you know, the, the GPS unit in the phone telling you where you are on the, on the geospatial PDF that you've downloaded. But at the end of the day, you know, folding out a, uh, a map to see, you know, everything that's around you is never going to go away. I mean, I've been down to, uh, to Nat Geo in, uh, in DC and you see their library and you see how many paper maps they're generating every day, right? And these things are, are always going to be a requirement for people that want to go out and hike. But, you know, I guess the, the void that we fill is, you know, where you are on your phone as well, right? So I think the combination of the two is a really cool thing. People just love maps. They yes, are, they, like I would say, probably everyone in the audience would say, I love maps. That's why I, one of the reasons I got into this, um, I... I, I was uh, I did museum studies as well, and what I before I got into this, but maps are actually one of the most popular exhibition pieces in museums around the world. There's sure. there's just a yeah a, a love story between people and maps and presenting information. Uh, so 
uh, we're, we're coming up to the, the close. Um, I want to thank you uh, and um, Michael uh, at Avenza for uh, putting this together. Um, we're, we're so happy to have you with us. And yes, we've worked together over, GoGmatix and Avenza have worked together over many years, uh, presenting in the community, supporting the community. Uh, we wouldn't be here today without the, the, the great work and the people at the Avenza team. So thank you uh, very much, Nick, for, for participating. No problem, Jonathan. All right, everybody, we're heading into a break. I will see everyone on the other side. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot. Bye.